Growing up, I had dreams and aspirations, but always felt like the kid that didn't fit in. For the most part, I wasn't a bad kid, but when I made the transition into adulthood, I turned to the streets for guidance. This led to getting locked up in juvenile hall, doing time in CYA, and eventually a 120-month sentence in federal prison. I had a lot of time to think and reflect during my federal sentence, so I share with you what I learned, hoping I can positively influence someone else's life with Prison Talk. What's up, everybody? It's Big Herc with Prison Talk, and I want to say thank you for tuning in for another episode. I want to say thank you to all our fans who've been supporting us throughout the years. And uh, because of you guys, we're almost at 100,000 subscribers. So tell your friends, tell your family, and tell your, uh, you know, your associates that um, they need to go ahead and subscribe to the realest shit on YouTube. Anyways, just got through watching the movie Shot Collar. It's coming out in the theaters here, I think within the next week or so. I ended up catching it on uh, DirecTV. And, um, you know, it's about a guy... He's a stockbroker, um, you know, has a family, a wife and a kid, you know, pretty good life, making really good money. Um, a square, straight square. Never been in any trouble, never had a felony. He gets into uh, an accident, leaving a restaurant with his wife and their two friends. And um, he's been drinking and driving. So he runs a red, he runs a red light and gets uh, side swiped. And the passenger in the back seat, which is one of his friends, dies. So he gets charged with uh, vehicular manslaughter and uh, causing bodily damage with an automobile. He blew a, a 1.0. So he pleads out to, um, I believe it's five, no, two years, but he has to do like 18 months off of that. The guy goes to prison and uh, his first night in prison, he sees what prison's all about. When he walks out, the motherfucking Grey Goose, which is a bus that transports him to the prison, and walks into the dorm where he'll be housed at, it's him and a couple other guys. And if I didn't, if I didn't mention to you guys before, this guy's white. So, you know, I'm basically telling the movie from a, this, this white guy's uh, perspective. And uh, there were other guys, you know, the, the guy that he walked into this, uh, the jail with, you know, there was a Mexican guy, there were some black guys, but there was a, a black guy walking with him who was particularly scared to death. And as um, soon as he, you know, they, they started talking about fresh fish, they walked into the dorm, um, you know, you, you knew something was going to go down. Well, anyway, this guy's first night, you know, while he's uh, trying to sleep, thinking about all the shit, you know, he's going to have to deal with, you know, he sees uh, a bunch of guys jump off the bunk and, you know, they basically attacked this black guy. He got raped in the middle of the night. They took them cheeks. And uh, after he seen that, man, I, I mean, it, 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 it turned a screw in his head. And, um, you know, he, he wasn't going to be a victim. So his first day on the yard, the next day, he was walking the yard and uh, he bumped into a black guy. A black guy gave him some problems and he took off on him. You know, and uh, everybody, you know, everybody was watching because everybody watches to see if you're a punk or not. So he went to the hole after that, got out. And um, basically, you know, from there, the, you know, the, um, the woods approached him and said, you know, hey, man, you're going to roll with us or what's happening? You know, you're not going to make it out here alone. And it's all about numbers. And this is in the state pen. So, you know, serious. And, um, you know, the woods, they, they ride serious up in that pen. They ain't playing no games, you know. And so it, what, what, it, what escalated from him beating up you know, a black guy, because he was being uh, disrespected, led to him eventually now having to, you know, keister dope, um, you know, go on hits, put in work for the, you know, for the, for the white pride. And um, this guy uh, ended up participating in a prison riot and stuck somebody and they caught it on camera and it turned a two year sentence into seven years. So, yeah, he uh, went from, you know, getting out in a matter of a short time to doing long time. And throughout that time, he basically wrote his family off, man. He, he said, um, you know, that was it. And his wife filed for divorce and he just basically turned turn his back on him. And, 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 you know, the gang became his family. And uh, 
you know, the movie's primarily about the progression of somebody, how they get involved in a gang, and how that gang basically, you know, becomes a part of their life. And, that, you know, and after this guy got out doing the seven years, you know, one of the shot callers for, you know, the woods basically told him when he gets out, he's going to have to take care of some business and make money for, you know what I'm saying, for the boys. So he got out, and the, the guy said if you didn't do it, they were going to take care of his family. You know what I mean? They were going to basically mop up his family. So he was under a lot of pressure. You know, he, he couldn't go back to a normal life. So he gets out, and you know the story. He's, he's on parole. He's trying to make moves. You know, one of the dudes in his crew is hot. You know what I'm saying? So he has to whack him, but he didn't get permission. The guy's validated. You know, um, a gun deal goes bad, and he ends up somehow, you know, for whatever reason, he tells the ATF and, you know, who, and, the, and the police, you know, where the guns, where the swap's going to be. And so they raid up on the spot. He gets caught up again and gets sent back to the motherfucking shoe program at Corcoran. And he's next to the guy who originally told him to go out there and handle the business. And uh, his whole object was to get back to this guy so he can whack his ass. And this guy was a shot caller. He was the big man in, this, you know, in, in the system. And um, you know, he ended up killing this guy and he got life without parole. So you know, this guy, you know, it, it's, it's a sad story. You know, there ain't nothing glamorous about it. Ain't nothing cool about being no motherfucking, um, you know, gangster like that, man, if you really love life. And, um, you know, the movie, man, it, it was it's just, it, it really it really lets you know how serious shit can get. So I say that to say watch yourself, man, and, and watch what you, what you do and who you associate with if you ever do have to go to do time because um, it can put you in some serious shit. And um, a lot of times you can't wipe that shit off.